Hello everybody, my name is X-Factor, welcome to my new setup video featuring a 5960X overclocked to 4.2 gaming PC, then of course a streaming PC with an AverMedia Live Gamer HD, including several things I picked up on the audio side, including a Mac mixer, which allows me to have complete control, not just what I hear on the gaming PC through my headset, but also what the live stream hears. That's right, I can have different mixes for everything. First up, let's cover the gaming hardware, and this is the Corsair 750D with a beautiful window on the side. This is the home to the 59 960X overclocked to 4.2 with an EVGA 780 Ti that's going to be replaced with a 980 EVGA Kingpin next week, including 32 gigs of DDR4 Corsair gaming RAM, the H105 Extreme CPU cooler, and there actually is no sound card on this computer. The EVGA X99 mobile sound card is so good. You simply do not need one. But what I do need is reliable hard drive since I use DX Tori to record. It's a pretty grueling process between that and editing. And I have several Western Digital Blacks to cover me, including an EVGA 1200 watt platinum power supply to pump the power to the entire system. A little bit overkill, but we're slowly growing into this computer. The streaming PC is housed in a Corsair 650D with a nice window on the side. And this computer is all about the CPU, which is a 3770K overclocked and the AverMedia capture card. Really don't need a graphics card, even though there is an EVGA 760 in there. Much RAM for that matter. It's all about the compression of the CPU so you can pump out a higher quality stream at a lower bit rate and the Asus Phoebus sound card. It's an amazing combination considering the music from my stream and when I'm gaming comes from the streaming PC goes through the mixer into those Audio Technica 700Xs. The sound is absolutely brilliant. A common problem for people who use a streaming and gaming PC setup is one mic. Therefore, you have to have it loop through your headset to port to the capture card, which can be an absolute nightmare. I hate it. Therefore, I picked up two different mics. This is the streaming PC mic on a Rode arm. It's an AKG C3000 with a USB converter. And for my gameplay commentaries, talking to people in game or doing this video right now, it's another Rode arm with the USB Marshall number six, which is going to be replaced with an upcoming audio technica mic when it comes to gaming it's about comfort and precision there you can see the thickness and the size of the qck heavy mouse pad along with the rocat cone xtd very large mouse available in laser and optical and the thing i like about this is the ability to grip both sides due to the curvature of it and the material it's made of and what's nice about this mouse is there is a tilt and scroll wheel allowing you to bind extra things to the mouse Finally, let's get to the audio side of things. The first is a common problem for a lot of people. Are you a gamer or live streamer and you have a buzz or electrical noise in your audio? Is the live stream picking it up? Is it annoying? These are ground loop isolators and I actually run several on my system to clear up any buzzing or humming I have. They are very inexpensive and very effective and more than likely fix your problem as long as it's not hardware failure. The next thing I picked up is a digital to analog audio converter box for the 5960X gaming PC. That gives me two lines of audio, your standard through your motherboard or sound card, then of course the digital output, that's what this is for. It gives me two different lines in the mixer amp. So I can put something like TeamSpeak on the digital out. You need some RCAs to quarter inch converters for the Mackie mixer. And then of course the game volumes on its own separate line on the mixer. So you can not only change what you hear in your headset and what the stream hears, but also when you're editing your software, the game audio is separate from your mic, which is separate from the audio of TeamSpeak, which is nice as well. One side gets the digital in and the power. The other side gets the RCA out. The ringleader to this audio circus is the Mackie 402 VLZ3. Very compact and very cost effective. This is something I bought a long time ago. As you can see, I'm doing some different conversion cables to make this work. It would have been nicer to have a couple more lines, but with that comes a higher price tag. On the top left, you're going to notice line 1 and line 2. That's from the main gaming, the 5960X, the normal audio output. You can balance each line separately, both on the gain and of course EQ them separately as well with full stereo sound which is very important when you're trying to hear footsteps and of course enemy positions. The next thing you're going to notice is line 3 and 4 to the right of that. That's actually the digital to analog conversion box. It's an RCA to quarter inch line. Those are coming in and of course I can raise and lower the gain on that. Not just for the stream but also the mix that goes into my headset. To the right of that you're going to notice the tape input. Remember that streaming PC with the Asus Phoebus? Well, that line actually comes from that. And here's why I wanted to use the tape input, because I can choose to assign it to the main output or take it off. 
So the music actually comes from the streaming PC, comes into the mixer, goes into my headset, but does not go back to the streaming PC, which is extremely important because the music's already playing there. It would create a loop of death, not to mention I could independently turn up the music, completely turn off, or blast out my eardrums and not affect what the stream hears. The last two things is the main mix in the bottom right by where the levels are at. I can independently turn up everything all together or turn it down once I find that sweet spot. Then of course above that is my actual headphone mix. Remember all this stuff is independent and adjustable. And then the main out up in the top which is buried goes to the back of the Aver Media Card. And the key setting in something like OBS is when you go to the Aver Media Card, right click it into properties, go to the audio section and make sure it's set to output audio to stream only. That'll keep all that audio that's being captured by the AV Media Card from bouncing back into the mix amp, which has also caused a nasty loop of death. The last important component to my live stream production is a green screen, of course, and it craves light. I have several FJ Westcott ice lights. These have a pretty good battery in them. They will run up to two hours unplugged, or you can plug them in the wall and they'll run indefinitely. Full LED, you can turn them up and you can turn them down. I've got a couple commercial stands, point them at the green screen, voila, you're done. Hope you guys enjoyed this setup video or found it helpful if you're having some audio issues or you're looking to upgrade. Remember, this is about complete control and customization of your audio lines, not just from a recording standpoint on your gaming PC, but also your streaming PC and what they can hear. You can control everything. There's going to be a link down below for all the different hardware just in case you want to upgrade some stuff, fix some issues, or do some of your own research. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you guys soon.